Shock the System. Welcome to Dank Discussions with me, Calican CEO Maynard Breslow. In each episode, you'll learn from the trailblazers, leaders, entrepreneurs, and influencers in the ever moving, ever growing cannabis industry. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Dank Discussions. Today, we're joined by Allison Sprinkle. It's a great name. Allison is the owner and creator of Pepper Lee CBD. Another great name. How's it going today? Oh, thank you. Thanks for the compliments. Uh, yeah, I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, you know, want to get into uh, your background in CBD and how things are going, but uh, also start off easy. As I always say, let us just know where you're based out of today. Uh, yeah, so I'm speaking to you from snowy slash sunny Winooski, Vermont, which is right outside of Burlington. They call it the Brooklyn of Burlington, so northern Vermont. Vermont. Yep. I can see you here in Zoom, but you have the uh, picture of Bernie, Vermont. So, uh, you know, primaries are done now, I guess. And uh, a little bit of bummer there, I know, for, for me and for a lot of people there supporting Bernie and uh, just uh, people supporting change in general and something new. Yeah, he changed the conversation. Um, so I'm really proud of him. And, you know, I see him around town a lot and and Jane too. And I always run up and give Jane a big hug every time I see her. And it's, it's a really a definite point of pride being from around here to, you know, see, you know, everybody's like, oh, Burlington, Vermont, such a cool place. And it's like, well, yeah, that's because of Bernie. <laughs> like he did so much to keep it, such a like civil beautiful respectful kind of place around here so we owe it all to him really and yes. you know all the all the community that's really activated around here yeah, definitely and i guess you know what what is the vibe there now not only with that but with cbd and cannabis and and everything else i mean you know hopeful uh here and uh, and, and just in general in business as well or, or how are things in, in vermont in that regard uh, for me, people, you know, this is the kind of community that it's like, oh, you're doing that thing. How can I support you? Like, I'm going to share your stuff on Instagram. I'm going to invite you to my pop up. I'm going to do everything I can to like help you succeed. Like, do you, you know, and it's just, it's a city, but it's like a small city. So everybody kind of knows each other. And it's like, you know, for my logo and web design, like I had a friend help me. Like it's, it's very much, uh, we're all just kind of like everybody's an entrepreneur and everybody's doing their own thing around here. So we all just kind of know how it is and know how to help each other, you know? Um, so I feel really fortunate to be in this industry, in this state, you know, the, the hemp program, the Vermont uh, department of agriculture is so supportive and so collaborative. And uh, you know, the, the first thing I did when I started my business was uh, hire lawyers and there's Vermont Cannabis Solutions. Um, give them a shout out. They built a great community of um, hemp and cannabis entrepreneurs and everybody's so welcoming. Um, and they have like a luncheon every month that we all get together and kind of just talk about the good and the bad and the ugly and get to know each other. And you know, when I first started going uh, January of 2000, 2019 uh there was a handful of us just around the table and every month it got bigger and bigger and bigger and you know it's really cool to see the the industry grow and to know that the state has our back about it all yeah and mean there you mentioned you know talking about the pop-ups and getting together once a month and we live in a different time now right i mean right it's yeah covid19 corona you know and uh we hopeful obviously that things are going to be moving and changing but we really don't know we don't have a you yeah know, you know i think uh you know health is, is first and foremost you know keeping people safe is first and foremost tell me a little bit of how it's affected you and your business um you know in terms of that pop-up and having that kind of sure um you know model obviously and having that community there that, that you guys were really you, you know supporting you and everything and, and how you've been able to transition now in these times yeah well the biggest like boon to my business when I was first starting was that I got accepted to the Burlington Farmer's Market, which was, I mean, it's, some people say it's like busier and more lucrative than even like a Boston Farmer's Market, um, just because the community comes out and supports it so much. So that was really how my business 
grew and thrived and got its name out there. I was the only, um, like only weekly CBD um, booth at the Burlington Farmer's Market. So that is now canceled, <laughs> obviously. And I was um, really looking forward to participating in that again. I had like gotten the acceptance email like two weeks ago. And then last week I got an email saying that it was canceled. So that it was a bummer, but I think it's also fun, especially because I'm such a young business to like, you know, I'm so passionate about my business that to adapt and to like change things is almost like fun for me. Like, it's like, okay, well, that's not an option anymore. What can I do? Uh -huh. You know? So it's like, how can I bring a farmer's market vibe or what would I say at the farmer's market? How can I make that like an Instagram video instead or an email or something like that? So just really, you know, meeting people where they are and where everyone is right now is on the internet. So just trying to figure out how to meet people there instead, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, uh, for someone who sells like shelf stable products like me, that's a lot easier than a lot of the farmers that are basically, uh -huh. I don't know what they're doing, but I know a lot of people are moving to online stuff. But, you know, I, I mean, markets and pop-ups have always been my favorite thing about my business and it's really what I love to do, but also like not having to schlep like two five foot tables and a 10 by 10 tent and all that. And just to be able to like work from home and be with my daughter and do that, you know, there's a blessing in everything, you know, so. Well, oh, definitely. And it's so difficult, obviously. And like you said, um, you know, for the farmers there and, uh, you know, yeah. things online for them you know, delivery, and there's other ways that they can too. You know, it's an interesting thought, you know, having like an online farmer's market, right? I mean, like the mm. same kind of thing. And, uh, you know, obviously it's nice to walk around and schmooze and you stop at one thing and stop at the other thing. So it's kind of different, right? I guess it wouldn't be yeah. the same in that, in that regard. But, uh, but definitely. Like well, even if the farmer's market did go on, it would have been such a different market and or more stressful. Like, I give out samples to people. I wouldn't be able to do that. Like mm -hmm. it, it would have had to have been so regulated mm -hmm. that I don't know if it would have even been like worthwhile because mm -hmm. only one person can stand and talk to you at a time. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like this summer, it's just about adapting to like what's actually happening. I'm a very pragmatic person. So it, it, I think I recovered mentally a little bit quicker than a lot of other people. Yeah, no, and it's it's difficult. I mean, I know a lot of people. That's that's the main thing that's come up continually, right? It's like mental health, emotional health, mm. how people are mm -hmm. reacting to it, how they and how this it's you know it's very triggering for a lot of people, right? Yeah, absolutely, and obviously, um, you know, and uh, you know, I'm grateful we're able to roll with the punches, but a lot of people aren't, and um, you know, yes, for many different reasons, obviously. So yes, uh, so it's uh, it's bringing up a lot of things, and you know, that brings up. Not to bring it all the way back to Bernie all the time. I try to not keep it too political. You know, the, the nest and how necessary. You can bring it back to Bernie. To that's fine access, with me. <laughs> how necessary? How how necessary it is to have access to to the right resources um, and care that people yes. need, and something that that in America we just kind of uh, you know stigmatize. You know, we talk about the stigma of, of cannabis um, that that's, right. that's so pervasive, but you know, the, the stigma around mental health and emotional health. Um, you know, in a country that you know, for, you know, kind of like uh, you, uh, you have to pick yourself up by your bootstraps, right? And it's right. like, you know, I was always learned, I was always taught growing up, it's like, okay, cool, pick yourself up by, by the bootstraps, just make sure everybody's got the same length of bootstraps, you know, kind of right. thing. So a lot of people right. not, uh, don't have those same resources or, you know, right. it's a very tough time right now for a lot of people, a lot of business owners. Yeah, sure. and I think that's why that comes back to like my whole discussion, what we were talking about earlier about like, equity in the cannabis business and like trying to bring in more of the minority um, and just people who have been persecuted based uh -huh. on, you know, that kind of harkens back to that idea too, I think. Well, definitely. We talk about that a lot on the podcast as well, you know, that's really yeah. for me, like the big passion topic, you know, I mean, I oh, really talking about, you know, entrepreneurship i get really fired up about it really excited about yeah. it you know obviously talking about cannabis and and um you know all this stuff is very exciting but when we talk about uh, stuff like the war on drugs or, or the reason mm. why prohibition and racism that that goes behind it and how now it's 
uh, you know, cannabis can be uh, in many states essential business, and yet there's uh, you know people still sitting behind bars. Um, yeah. For, for cannabis related uh, crimes, it's uh, it's it's a horrible horrible situation we're dealing with. I guess it's hard. It's horrible. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. So I guess, you know, tell, tell me about that passion that you have there for minorities, for the social equity aspect, and also, you know, your woman-owned business and uh, the importance of having that as well, representative in the, in the industry. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, cannabis, the flowers come from the female plant. So I think that women have a certain touch when it comes to cannabis and working with cannabis and being healers and things like that. I feel, uh, I feel like that's definitely a part of it. Um, but yeah, the, the whole equity part is, it's important to, for everyone to just have an opportunity because we have been, you know, policing and jailing and just treated African Americans and minorities so horribly in this country and based on some weed, like use that to justify so many things. And I just think that the people who have been, you know, oppressed need to now be lifted up because we're all being lifted up by this thing. Like I feel so lucky to be able to work with this plant every day and to to thrive. And I and I want that for especially for people who haven't felt that before and or have felt oppression. Oh yeah, and I mean, it's, it's really, I'm so grateful that we do live in this time and there still has to yes. be so much progress, you know, that we have to have a lot of change needs to be, needs to be done and implemented. Just the fact that we can have this conversation openly mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, you know, that I can, we can own a cannabis business and it can be right there on my LinkedIn and you Google Maynard Breslow and cannabis is going to be the, first things that come up and uh, you know yeah. it was something that had to hide right and I think yeah that's what I think that's what a lot of uh you know even within America you know a lot of different cultures are still feeling that right they're still feeling that having to hide and having to run you know from from authority and where it's uh you know it, there's really no reason for it you know and uh, a lot more change I'm glad that we're able to to experience this and, uh, but I guess like you're saying, it's kind of our duty to, uh, to push the envelope and uh, to demand that, uh, that everybody be able to, to, to feel that right. and have an opportunity, not just an opportunity, but to, to, to have freedom, you know, that right. people still, still suffer from that. Well, I, I just understand that the color of my skin affords me more opportunities. So I then turn around to the people who don't have the opportunities and I really want to bring them in to the discussion you know yeah it's i just feel like it's our responsibility no oh, definitely definitely and i even talk to people that they feel guilty almost and it's like you know i'm a white woman and i'm a white man and then you know in, in here and it's like it's not a matter of feeling guilty you know we are who we are everybody is, is different right. you know i'm yeah grateful to yeah, be yeah. uh i'm grateful to be a chicano and and who i am you know and then that's part of yeah. who i am as a person you know i'm a she kind of do, you know, and then I'm and I wear <laughs> that proudly, you know. So it's like, but oh, yeah. I, but I have certain opportunities that 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 others don't, you know. And uh, it's uh, it's it's our job, I guess, like you're saying, to buy for that. So it's not a guilt thing. It's just a matter of okay, cool. So I have something someone else doesn't have. How can I bring them on? Right. Board? What do you do with that? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. How, how do how do you take that guilt and make it productive? And exactly. How do you take it and help somebody, make somebody's life better? Exactly. Exactly. So cool. I was, you know, I also want to get into, you know, for me, one of the big things is the fascination, my fascination with uh, not just people's background in the industry and with cannabis in general, but just their, their journey in entrepreneurship in life, you know, so walk me through sure. your experience with cannabis, um, you know, any fun stories you have and, uh, you know, what led you here to Pepper Lee CBD and, and wanting to give back and everything that you're doing. Yeah. Uh where do I begin? Um, I mean, I started smoking weed when I was like 12 or 13 years old out of, you know, crushed soda cans with holes poked in them in the woods. <laughs> That's pretty young, 12, 13. I think I was like yeah. 14, 15. So maybe I'm just, it was like know. inappropriate for sure. I was in like eighth grade the first time I smoked weed, I think. Yeah. 
yeah we were just it was wild our the i'm from southeastern connecticut and i don't know we were just wild kids it was definitely you know a lot of like my kind of crowd too you know yeah (laughs) yeah just driving around smoking blunts listening to jay-z you know that was my first album jay-z was my first album i ever bought you know reasonable doubt I hope. No, volume two, <laughs> volume two, hard knock yeah. life. That was the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to get on that reasonable doubt. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Since then, since then, I've heard it all. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then, you know, fast forward, I was arrested when I was 17 for a little bag of sticks and stems, which anyone listening to this who knows me will chuck, who knew me then will chuckle because it was like the talk of the high school that I also got arrested for having a bag of sticks and stems and I had to do a ton of community service. Um, But, you know, it didn't, I still continued to smoke weed. Um, It didn't really deter me. It was like I would get out of community service and then go buy a bag and smoke a blunt. Like it didn't bother me. Um, And then I was just and stems instead of, uh, you know, the good stuff. You know, my dad always yeah, told now, me, like, if you're going to get caught for something, has do it right. You know, when I got <laughs> yeah. caught, when I got caught, it was with, like, a quarter pound. You know what I mean? So at least yeah. I was like, okay, it's worth it. It was worth know, it. Whatever else. Yeah, exactly. You know? well, like, that's I'm going to sit here part. and pick up trash for, exactly. for a week at a time for some seasons, <laughs> for some seasons, some stems. Like, come on. <laughs> I did find 20 bucks one time when I was picking up trash, oh, nice, though. Nice. So I figured out it was, like, because of that 20 bucks, I was making, like, 13 cents an hour for the amount of hours that I did. Then we go back to those who are incarcerated and with the, you know, and uh, we can have that conversation again. Exactly. (laughs) Um, So, yeah. And then, you know, after I had my daughter, um, I definitely slowed down on smoking weed. I quit drinking and just kind of became like mommy. Um, So, but then I, that was when like, you know, so I quit drinking maybe four years ago and then CBD started to become a thing in Vermont, maybe like three years ago. And I was, I remember taking like a little capsule and I was like, Oh, this is lovely. (laughs) I feel great. This is like everything that I ever wanted weed to be like, I'm not anxious. I don't have munchies. Like I feel at peace. Like this is actually like, this is what I was looking for in cannabis the whole time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, And it just like sparked something in me. Uh, So then I um, just got a little bit of cannabis. It kind of just like became, uh, it became available, like the whole hemp thing. So I got a little bit and I started playing around with it. And I started by making like little tinctures and capsules and like oil extractions. And I was on fire about it, but I hired some lawyers and they were like, oh, the FDA, we're not really sure what's going to go on. Like, so I was like, oh, well, I'll just be, I'll just do topicals. That was like kind of a knee jerk reaction to not wanting to be regulated by the FDA. Mm -hmm. But then I started to just get really excited about making topical applications of CBD. And I like made this coffee scrub and it like cleared up my face. And I made this muscle rub and it was like helping my dad not have to use ibuprofen as much. And I was like, oh my gosh, this stuff is like actually changing my life, my family's life. So then I like very shortly after that, I was like, I don't, I'm a waitress. Like that's what I've done for most of my professional life. I was like, well, if I don't, you know, I'm approaching 40 years old. I don't know if I want to wait tables. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all, but it's also really hard on your body. Um, So I was like, this could be a way to make money and also like feed my soul and help my community. So let's just give it a shot. Um, So I kind of like tapped all my friends, like graphic design friends and website designer friends. And everyone just kind of like held me up and was like, this is great. And I did a lot of trade uh, for work because everyone wanted what I was making. uh, So it was really exciting. So then, you know, two years later, here I am, I've got the website and I'm talking to you and it's, you know, it's definitely been a cool journey with cannabis. I don't, I still like, I don't smoke weed anymore at all, really. Like once in a while, if I'm like out on my husband's boat, I'll take like a hit, but it's really the CBD is what I've always been looking for. So it's really cool to, to be alive when this is happening. And also like 
so much love to um, little Charlotte that we just lost um, last week. Um, she really made all of this possible. So I just want to definitely uh, give her some love because that's a big loss. Uh, definitely. And, you know, talking about paving the way and, the, you know, helping those. And she helped all of us, right? Everything that exactly. we were able to do. And uh, her, she suffered throughout her life as well. And, um, you know, and uh, with the, the, the benefits she was able to give all of us, right? But, um, but you mentioned there, you know, so, so definitely um, 100% with you with that. Um, mentioned there, yeah. you know, I, I, I kind of been in the same boat as you, whereas, you know, I, I started smoking we pretty young, you know, like I said, 14, 15. And uh, I was looking, didn't realize the time, but looking for relief from, from, multi, from many different things. And like you said, like, you know, uh, CBD now is kind of like my main thing, you know, I mean, yeah. With, whether with the tinctures or smoking it, you know, it's so funny. I used to think smoking something doesn't get you high. What the hell is the point of that? You know what I mean? What's but, the uh, point? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, like it's so funny um, now, but you know, same thing, like smoke when I want to smoke, you know, but when I want to, and uh, but for the most part, you know, the t the CBD was always kind of what I was looking for. But, exactly. Um, but now you you know, so so you do your own formulation and, and processing and everything yourself. I do everything but the farming. I guess is how I could put it. Wow. Um, yeah. That's very good. I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in the industry they, they have their different manufacturers. Talk talk to me a little bit about that process. Uh, it's just a straight up like witchy lipid extraction like right into coconut oil or grapeseed oil or avocado oil just in my production kitchen in my home it's super small batch like and then i take that coconut oil and i make you know a really beautiful like salt scrub with chamomile and calendula and dead sea salt just whip it together in my mixer um or you know coffee scrub with i have a friend that roasts coffee and he gives it to me and I make a coffee scrub for like the face and that's just really simple with like I infuse herbs into apple cider vinegar and put that in there and it's all like my techniques are definitely more on like the witchy side of things than like the lab technician side of things like it's definitely a um an herbalist approach I guess you could what, say. what do you mean by that witchy side of things <laughs> well I don't, I don't have like a million dollar lab, then I'm not like extracting like these terpenes and these, you know, and I'm not like dialing it in like down to the zero, zero, zero percent. Like, you know, it, it's more just earth, air, fire, water, and my love, you know, love going it. into it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the whole, it plays in the whole thing, right? Pepper Lee and the pop-ups and the farmer's market, you know, I mean, you see a lot of times, you know, people in the farmer's market and you ask them what's in the stuff and they don't, either they don't know or it's all kinds of crap in there, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, mm -hmm. they're selling products and it's supposed to be a wellness, right? I mean, the whole thing, right. CBD wellness and what you're putting in your right. body. So, mm -hmm. um, you know. Yeah, I mean, all my plant matter. Country, you know, but. Yeah. All the plant matter that I use is, you know, grown in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, which is like the most beautiful, unspoiled, like, very mystic feeling like you drive out there and you're like what is the vibe out here it's like kind of dark and creepy but also like so unspoiled and beautiful and just it's the, it's the most amazing like untouched part of Vermont and that's where the hemp grows that I use um, by a family farm that's certified organic um, so that was really important for me to find like a good farm partner because I just, I mean, there's so many hemp farms, as you probably know, like, I don't need to do the farming. Like, oh, I yeah. could, I um, guess, but yeah. I don't, I want to support um, farms instead of trying to be all of the things. I'm enough of the things. <laughs> I don't need to do it all. Exactly. And so you stick to all the, the scrubs and the, the rubs and yeah. the topicals and the... Yeah, bath, beauty, and wellness is what I say. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. And is it, that's just a matter of the same kind of thing, like, there's enough people doing the uh, everything else you know the uh, edibles and the tinctures and everything yeah else, you know? well it's or, kind or is, of there, like, or is you know, there a reason behind that you're like you know what this is for me this is what I find relief in and this is what I see and this is what, uh, what I kind of want to stick to yeah the more that I started playing around with the, the topical applications the more I just fell in love with it and really found my niche and I think that you know 
just because I'm CBD and just because I work with hemp doesn't mean I need to make dog treats and tinctures and like the whole, I don't need to make every single thing that is, has CBD in it. Like I have friends that are making amazing chocolates, you know, I don't need to do that. Like there's already somebody doing that, you know? So it's like, I, and I think as the industry grows and ages, like I think people are going to start to find their niche and realize yeah, that they of don't course. have to do everything. Yeah. Um, so I've really found my passion and what works for me and what people expect from me now um, is that more like feminine approach and like skincare and hair care. And I make like scoopable bath bomb things that people love. And, you know, it's, it's more about, um, like a gentler, more feminine side, I guess you could say. That's great. That's great. I guess, you know, aside from, you know, obviously the pop-ups being down right now and everything like that in the farmer's market, what, what is the biggest obstacle that your, your business face? And I guess how, how have you, or how are you able to overcome it? Um, besides the pop-ups there, it, people are still finding me on the internet. Um, so I would say everything, you know, I'm not in a ton of retail stores, like, and I'm only really a year old business. So I haven't like, there weren't any huge accounts that I had that have now pulled back. So, and I don't have employees, so I don't have a ton of overhead or didn't have to like lay anyone off. So I feel like as far as, um, the coronavirus stuff, I haven't been hit as hard as some other people. Um, because I'm small anyways. <laughs> so, yeah. it, so it really wasn't a huge hit and it's, and like I said, I have such a, such a supportive community around here that people are still finding ways to support me. That's awesome. So you haven't really seen a job of them. So the people that you were already buying from you, they're still, they're buying from you from your shop now, right? You know, exactly. So. It's more web orders. Yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to like figure out like, okay, what are the things that I used to tell people at the farmer's market? How can I like translate that online? Like, okay, so what stories do I tell people at the farmer's market? How can I, how can I make that an Instagram post or how can I like turn that into like an email or something? Um, so that's kind of where I'm at, just like adapting to what's actually happening right now. Um, and people seem to be responding and like, you know, nobody can get a haircut right now. So I just made a hair mask so that people can like love on their hair <laughs> and not, freak out quite as much i'm just thinking about like what do people need now from me you know yeah and then have, have you seen uh, i mean how has it just been kind of all word of mouth or is there you know you mentioned the the instagram posts or the emails is mm, it, mm -hmm. you know is there you have like techniques that you can share with the people here um of how you've been able to because i think a lot of people are suffering from the same thing right of uh, of not you know, kind of like, cool, well, my store's clothes are my, my normal yeah. uh, farmer's clothes, but maybe a lot of people aren't, don't know that I'm online or, or, or um, you know, it's not really spreading the same way that I, that I would have. And uh, so what do you, how, how are you going to Well, I guess out? like my, um, my friend always says like, where are your people and what do you, what do they need and how can you serve them? And if you can answer those three questions, usually that will lead to people finding you and being able to support you. So where are people? People are on the internet right now. And what do they need? They need something to help them relax. And, you know, how can you serve them? Maybe give them a little extra love in when they order something from you. Throw in a little something free or give them a discount or, you know help them to understand how, like a lot of my products don't really exist anywhere else, like CBD salt scrub and bath scoops and hair masks and coffee scrubs and things like that. Like it's, it, they're all kind yeah, of Yeah, it's unique definitely products. unique. A lot of the stuff, you your products are very unique. <laughs> yeah. um, so like instructing people on how to use them and like I'd make little videos about like what I do. Cause basically I just make products that I want to use. And then I'm banking on the fact that other people will want to use them because I'm not that different than other people. Um, so I just kind of, I've been doing little videos about like how I use my products and like what kind of rituals I create around them and things like that. Um, and that's helped people understand my products a little bit better. 
Um, so yeah, that that's helped for sure. And just, you know, because I'm a one woman show and because it's just my business and like, I'm on fire about it. Right. So that helps me because I'm always thinking about it. So I'm always thinking of new ways to like communicate to my people because I care about them and I care about my business and I want people to have these things. So however I can help them get it, I'm going to, you know. I definitely, no, definitely. And uh, I mean, I'm mean, love, like, like you said, you're making products for yourself and uh, right. they are unique, you know, it's definitely unique stuff. It's not, you know, you kind of see the same products a lot of times, like you're saying, you know, everybody wants to be everything to everybody, but uh, right. when you really, you know, niche in and uh, specialize in something. And that's all, what I always tell uh, my clients as well. You know, just, you have to find a niche. I know you want to be able to everybody and everybody has an endocannabinoid system and you know, there's no reason right. why, you know, you can't be that, but there is because you want to make products for people that are going to hear you and hear your message and that, it, that it's your message, right? Not, not trying to reach somebody that may, may not relate to you and that's okay. There's a product out there for them and someone else that they can relate to a little bit differently. Exactly. Uh, very good. So, I mean, obviously we, uh, we live in a weird time right now. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to pull out that crystal ball, but what can we expect from Pepper Lee CBD in the future? Any plans? Um, I think, you know, just slow, happy, calm growth, hopefully. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a mom and there's a lot of homeschooling going on right now. So uh, I just want to figure out how I can serve my community as best I can and hopefully get back into farmers markets if that's the vision, but just to continue making my products and getting them to the people that need and want them and just keep on keeping on, you know, I think people, um, people, my stuff resonates with people. And once they find me, like I, I think people really love it. So I think just that kind of like simple, like, one-on-one -on -one conversation and relationship is really what I thrive on. Um, so nothing crazy, hopefully. <laughs> amazing, Just amazing. Staying, staying here and doing my thing. That's it. That's it. And uh, I mean, I love the calmness and everything that you exude here. Um, you know, just kind of that, like, keep on the going. CBD. You know, we <laughs> talked about, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like you said, you know, there's a lot of, you know, crazy times and a lot of people freaking out. And I think you have the, the right viewpoint on it right like you know things change and just got to keep uh moving along little by little and that's kind of the best way you know so appreciate it i love it so uh cool yeah it's fun to be creative and adapt and all that like it's if if you know i was listening to your uh podcast with the guy from hawaii and how you said like you know mama ganja like decides who stays and that's how yeah. it is and like if your aim is true and you're creative and your intentions are good and your energy is good then you'll be around and you'll you know you'll figure out a way to serve your people so it's true it's true and i, I truly think. believe that too we live in a culture you know where i think and you know everybody thinks you push and you shove and you fight growth, your growth, way growth. to the top and everything yeah. like that and there's something you said you know you got to keep moving and, and all that stuff oh, for sure you know, and, and everything like that, no doubt about it, you know, and, uh, uh, but at the same time, how are you doing it? What's the intention behind it? Right? What's your energy? And, uh, what's your yeah. energy? And do you have the, the, the good intentions in mind and others in mind um, and doing things with integrity? To me, that's the most important. Right. And people can, people can see that, especially nowadays, people can spot a phony. Consumers are a lot more educated these days than they ever have been. So. Savvy, savvy people out there, and we, you know, we're kind of right. trained how to judge, you know, for better or for worse, and uh, everything, you know, in mm -hmm. a matter of seconds, right? I mean, just that's right. When you meet somebody, or whether you're just browsing on their website, you know, and you can really yep. tell something really quickly. So whether something mm -hmm. looking at a box and branding and everything like that, for better or for worse. Absolutely. Uh, so very good. Now, uh, ask all my guests this. I'm excited to hear your, your response as well. You know, how do you define success, whether professionally, personally, existentially? What does success look like for you? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, uh, being able to help people, I guess, would be, you know, in a meaningful way, I think, goes a long way to define um, how, you know, how I would feel about my success would be 
if I was helping the most amount of people and, you know, and also my community and myself. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Helping community. I think that's been the theme of this whole thing, right? You know, community and, and sustainability and, um, um, it comes full circle. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so very good. So as we close, how can listeners find out more about you, Pepperleaf CBD, connect with you and find and uh, buy your unique products? Yeah, so it's uh, pepperleafcbd.com is my website. And um, I'm on Instagram at pepperleafcbd as well. So you can go have a look at that and kind of get a vibe of what my products are and what I'm all about. And if anyone has any questions, I'm Allison, A double L Y S O N at Pepperly CBD dot com. <laughs> Very good, Allison. Really appreciate you. Really appreciate you jumping on with me today. And thank you all. Oh my gosh, I appreciate listening. it. Thank you. That was, that was good. So, uh, yeah, definitely in the great vibe. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it'd be really good the, uh, once not only getting through this time, but uh, and beyond. So, I wish you all the best. Good luck in 2020 and beyond. You as well. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. We at Calican are passionate about cannabis marketing, branding, and web design. If you're a cannabis entrepreneur and you know you need an uptake in business or an upgrade in the way your customers perceive you, come check us out at calican.com and schedule a time to speak with us. Plans start at $248. Thanks for listening in to Dank Discussions, and we are so grateful for each and every one of you. We want to continue making dank content you want, so give us some feedback about the topics you want covered. Feel free to reach out to us at grow at calican.com. That's C-A-L-A-C-A-N-N.com. And follow us on Instagram for our latest updates.